what I, I could go deeper into that and say, by the time that, from, from the time that I've had my initial commercial fixed wing license to now, uh, which is only a year and nine months, wow. I'd say I've flown at least 1,300 hours. In a jet. Wow. In a jet. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Man, that's great. That's great. Hi, welcome to the Pro Pilot Playbook, where we give you the tips, tricks, and hacks to become an airline pilot faster and cheaper. And this is episode number 54. We're very excited here. Um, we're starting a new series where we have guests, uh, in this case, a partially in-person guest uh, on the show. And uh, I think you're really going to like this episode. Um, it, it, we, we, put a, uh, we put this episode on the fast track to get put together. And the reason why is our uh, most viewed episode uh, of the Pro Pilot Playbook in the last three year history has been a video on skipping your CFI. Um, so we know that our viewers uh, have a very keen interest in that topic. Uh, uh, and you guys are up and coming. So we wanted to build on that and add on that. Um, so this is the continuation of that video. And we thought, what better idea but to bring a real live professional pilot who's made it in the industry on the show uh, that's actually skipped his CFI in real life. Um, so we're happy to have uh, Jordan with us and and Sean. He's a good friend of Sean's, and I'll let him do the introduction. Yeah, yeah, Mike. You know, I, I'm sure the viewers have noticed this is the first time I think I'm out of my office recording one of these things. And uh, you're always all over the place. Now you're at home <laughs> yeah. in the office. We can but, tell who uh, yeah, works here. more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're here in Georgetown, Kentucky, the Georgetown, Kentucky airport. I just thought this would be a nice location to have Jordan meet me at. And, uh, yeah, we're sitting here in one of the hangars. Hopefully it doesn't get too noisy with planes going by and stuff. This airport's usually pretty dead. And as soon as we hit the record button, you know, there's 14 airplanes <laughs> flying by. But, uh yeah, Jordan has uh, not only, when I came across Jordan's story, it, it really struck me because not only did he do the exact thing a lot of our listeners are excited about, which is very important, skipping your CFI can save you tons of time and, and you're getting right out there doing the job, sitting in the right seat of being an actual paid pilot instead, well, not that being a CFI isn't being a paid pilot, right. but it's a lot different sitting in the right seat of a machine like this sitting behind us versus the little Cessna, you know, getting all sweaty all day. <laughs> but uh, I thought, you know, maybe we would just let Jordan uh, in, you know, Jordan isn't just, he's been doing this for a while. Jordan, I, I think maybe I, I should just shut up and stop rambling and let you tell your story a little bit about how, uh, you know what maybe just start at the beginning you know how did you go to your training yeah, did man. you did you go to one of those hurry up get them done schools like atp or were you the guy going to the local airport taking your flight lessons and stuff yeah i was definitely the latter guy uh i i was um you know actually right here at this airport is where i started my training uh there was a little r22 here and uh, i didn't know anybody that was in aviation so I, I really, you know, I, I didn't have the pro pilot playbook and, and anything like that in order to, to kind of guide where I was going in this industry. And uh, so I kind of just hopped up here one day and, uh, you know, there's a, a guy up here that was giving flight lessons actually out of a helicopter in R-22. Uh, and, you know, getting getting that private was, was an amazing uh, accomplishment and it was a blast. But it was not cheap. And I know that's kind of what you guys are, are pitching with the podcast here is how to get it done fast, um, you know, cheap and effectively. And I did it completely the other way. But <laughs> yeah, the helicopters, I mean, what's a helicopter? It's probably like three times as much as a, a little Cessna or something. Yeah, I mean, this Correct. was yeah. before all the all the price hikes, but I think it was around 375 an hour. So Woo, yeah, wow, too fun. But Wow. Uh, so was your intention to become a professional helicopter pilot or was it just to have fun at, at, at it was man i i really uh there's a helicopter right there but i you know i really love helicopters they're they're amazing machines 
Uh, but it is super hard to get in that job industry compared to, especially as a guy with low time, uh, compared to getting in, you know, the right seat of a jet and, uh, you know, doing the job that, that I do now. But uh, right. I, I have been in both industries. I've had a job as a helicopter pilot and I've had a job, um, you know, as a as an SIC in an airplane and um, it's and, and also a captain now. Uh, oh, cool. So yeah, when you yeah, say Jordan just hard. got some news. This is kind of a cool little thing. Maybe we get in this later. But Jordan just got some fantastic news as of last night. This is kind of a surprise. But uh, go ahead, Mike. What were you going to say? Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll come back to that. Yeah. So uh, so when you're a hell, uh, you said it's difficult to be a low time helicopter pilot starting out. Is that because there's a lot of military uh, guys in the field? Absolutely. With a lot of yeah. The, the influence is there. The first job that I had pretty much, I would say at least half of those seats that were filled were, were helicopter guys. So uh, okay. or, we're, we're military, military guys. Yeah, military guys. So would you say um, as far as getting your private license is it is it harder in a helicopter than a plane i mean you've done both or what what are, you, are helicopters harder to fly yeah that was actually uh, an, an interesting transition because a lot of the time that applied uh you know to my private and to your licenses actually transfers over um to the fixed wing so you know your total time and all that and it, it does make it a lot easier because you're not sitting in those ground school sessions going, oh, what's an airport? What are the markings? What, what's weather? You know, because you kind of already know all that, or you should at least. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I think what Mike, as far as getting your private in the helicopter, do you feel like it, I mean, do you have any awareness of whether it took you longer to get your private going the helicopter route than somebody going in a Cessna 172? Oh, man, that's, that's, a, that's always been a toss up. I think that I think it's harder as far as uh, you know. Oh, I don't. I don't even want to say skill because there's so much skill associated with both. But it is harder to grasp those physics, really, that you're using in order to, to hover and and you know all that kind of stuff. Okay. And then, do you do cross countries in a helicopter, uh, like you for do. your private? Ones? Yeah. Yes, sir. You do. Um, forgot what the time was. Maybe it's maybe it's twenty five or heck, I don't know. Maybe it's just ten. I think for the private. Because I've got okay. the commercial as okay. well, so but yeah, you gotta you gotta do cross countries. A lot of that stuff is is still the same. So and I suppose gotcha. the instrument rating in a helicopter almost is non-existent. Correct. So you you worked on your private, built up time, and then took your commercial check ride. Right. I, I never did the the did the instrument. There is a lot of uh, people that I knew that do have an instrument um, in the helicopter, but I never never did that because that's even more costly. So. Uh, but of course, you have to do it in an airplane. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. That you know, okay. that's a must. That's a must, and it really, uh, it it really increases your in-depth knowledge of airplanes and flying and and what goes on when you have your instrument. There's, uh, you know, if you have a, a a license, you have to get your instrument immediately too. So, so yeah. Sure. So uh, yeah. just to give our viewers, I just thought of something we should have covered right in the beginning. Um, Jordan, how much? Uh, what's your total time at right now? I'm sitting uh, right at about 2,000 hours. That's total time. Okay. Gotcha. And um, how much time do you have in jets now? Jets is uh, about 1,075. Okay. Wow. Like that. Yeah. Okay. So you got your you got your commercial helicopter and uh you went uh did you what was your next thing did you find a helicopter job did you realize yeah maybe maybe and, maybe i went the wrong direction here yeah exactly and it, i did get a helicopter job i uh, got a lot of hours from doing that but just to try and shorten the story here i ended up finding out that wasn't for me i kept looking over at the guys you know getting out of jets on the ramp because they park us helicopter guys way away from the jets anyways and i was like man that That'd be awesome to do that because you're going all across the country. You're going to great places. And, uh, you know, I always wanted to do that. So I kind of just um, I did a hard stop on it. I quit um, and I started to work at a, a local FBO here. And I think that's one of the major keys on getting in the industry is yeah. is knowing people and just being in that space is just so important. Uh, and, and also just your 
your personal interactions on a daily basis with people that are in the industry. Uh, right. and you know, that's, that's really a big deal. Cause if you have those certifications, there is a need, uh, for it to be filled and, you know, personability and just talking to, to guys, it kind of helps you get in that seat a lot. Mm -hmm. That's a very important point. So expand on that for the viewers, tell them what an FBO is and what your job was, what you did in that. It's a fixed base, uh, operator. Um, they fuel the airplane. Uh, park the airplane. Uh, we we call them ramp guys and and ladies. I've been seeing a lot more uh, ramp ladies on the ramp recently. Yeah, uh, for yeah. some reason. I but that's pretty cool. They do a great job. Um, but yeah, so pretty much just uh, assistance um, for to uh, you know form the the kind of line that they want that day with the airplanes. Park the uh, nose into the wind, all that kind of stuff. That's what what an FBO does. But you kind of that's how you get your feet wet. And of course, you're not making a lot of money, and so that's always kind of a, a tough pill to swallow. But it does allow you to meet people in the industry. You know, especially if you you don't know anybody that's that's in the industry, it, it really helps. So yeah, we're always harping on the networking. You know, it's way better Absolutely. to go get a job at the local airport fueling airplanes and towing airplanes around than it is to go get a job at, uh, you know, the local enterprise branch or something, you know, and you're out there interacting with the people doing the job yeah. you want to do. Yeah. And yeah. Shout out to, uh, I was at Orlando executive last week and, uh, one of the line guys stopped me, uh, Kenny, shout out to Kenny, said he's a fan and he's working on his license. So, you know, you, you hear that time and time again, uh, the guys break into the industry by just being around planes. They make connections. You're meeting jet owners. You're meeting pilots. Um, you know, you might not be making a ton of money, but you're learning a, a, a ton of valuable stuff. And then, Absolutely. you know, it just, it wait just a minute, really wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Is this a new guy or did you get recognized again? Is oh, this, man, is this I'm, the same I'm getting guy? cited all over, man. Gosh, yeah, darn it. Nobody ever recognizes me. You must not be approachable. <laughs> that, that must be what it is. You're not approachable. Maybe, uh, maybe I just <laughs> never fly. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I just never work enough. <laughs> but yep, from, yep. from my job, you know, at the FBO, uh, I, was, I was knocking it out. Uh, of course, I was already a commercial pilot, so I ran straight into uh, being a commercial fixed-wing pilot. Um. I did you have to well you have to do a transfer how's that work it's another check ride correct exactly right but yeah. it's real low like you just have to have a, a few hours especially the private it was like 15 hours i didn't 20. ever do the private oh you didn't even worry yeah about so private. i just okay. went straight over to commercial um so you know obviously the standard for your flying is a lot higher going from that private to the commercial but right you know if you have that experience it'll be okay but they so if you're a, a fixed wing guy and you want that helicopter license for recreational use, or maybe you're just interested in a helicopter job, it also works the other way too. Right. So, um, I think it's like, what, 15 or 20, is it 25 or 15? It's something like that, that number of hours to add on that license. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's 25. Okay. Yeah, don't quote me on that. Um, gotcha. But then I got my instrument uh, and, and, you know, like I said earlier, that's key. Uh, you gotta, you gotta have that instrument and then you got the multi. So there is a multi layered process in this. And I do want to bring up that, you know, anything that's worth having really in life or anything that's worth doing, it does take a lot of work, right. you know? Um, yeah. It, it, and so this is definitely one of those career fields that you do got to put, put the work in and it, you know, you're, you're taking written, you're taking check rides and, and you gotta, you gotta come to play definitely. So, um, so, I, so you had your, so you got your commercial fixed wing, added the instrument on. What was your mindset? You're gonna be a CFI? Start working on your CFI certificate, or that was that was the initial mindset. Um, but I did know quite a few people in the in the industry at that time, so. I tried to start getting in people's ears, you know, putting the bug in, in guys' ears and saying, hey, you know, I've got these now. So if, you know, if, if it's needed at any time, you know, give me a shout. And, uh, you know, the call did actually come for me. Um, but it, that being said, um, bef I did get my CFI. Okay. But I do feel like that's a badge of honor in the industry, too, because. Right. 
you know, guys that and, and girls that if you're in the industry and say you have a CFI, I have a CFI, that's just another level there. Well, that's um, one thing we say in the program. But one of the things in the program, uh, you know, the Pro Pilot Playbook program that we sell, you know, there's a whole section, a whole module on this whole skipping your CFI thing. But we preface all of that with, you know, just because you're skipping, it doesn't mean you know, not getting it is a good idea. I've said over and over throughout my career, I really didn't learn how to fly until I had to teach somebody how to do it. Absolutely. Right. right. Um, I did get a CFI job, uh, but quickly after uh, I got the job that I have now. So, okay. So I think that having that, you know, maybe on your resume or maybe uh, them seeing you out on the ramp kind of doing doing that CFI job and having those cer certifications do significantly increase your chance of getting in that right seat and making that jump. So basically, as soon as you got your CFI, you got approached or you found a, a job. Explain what that job was. Uh, th that job, it was a Part 91 operator. Um, and, uh, it was in, so now I have time in, uh, uh, Sovereign. So CE 680, we've got the, the CJs, uh, Hawkers. Which is what's sitting behind us. Yeah, right it? behind us here. Oh, Hawker nice. 800. Yeah. 800A is, or XP or something. Yeah. Um, CXP. Yeah. But this, yeah, this is actually one of the airplanes you fly. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yes, definitely. So awesome. And a few various other ones, um, but but yeah, man, that's that's been my road, and it's definitely been longer than I wanted it to be. But you know, that's kind of you just got to get jump through those hoops and and get in that seat. So yeah, yeah, great. So do you feel, Jordan, that your job uh, at the airport, working at the FBO as a line person, do you think that may have been the bridge? that allowed you to bypass all, all of the instruction? Invaluable. Like it, having that job was, was the best thing that, that I've ever done really. Cause it, I would have had no other way of, of breaking in and, and meeting the guys that I know now. Um, and I'm, I'm lucky enough to, to uh, have gotten that job, which it wasn't a hard job to get. Cause a lot of people don't want to do that kind of manual labor. So right. it's, it's not tough to get the job, but, it is a tough job because uh, oh, the elements and stuff, uh, but it was very uh, valuable to me. You know, maybe not uh, the money, but the experience that was associated with it and who I met through doing it. I'm I'm just curious because I mean, to me, it's a no brainer. But because I'm looking back through my career of you know doing this for over 20 years now, 20 actually. This year's year 27, I think, or something. I've been flying, I think, actually getting paid. It's less than that. But, um, you know, looking at all of it from my perspective, it like seems so simple. Yeah. Like, why wouldn't you do that? But was your mindset at that point when you're a CFI, like, did that even enter your headspace of a possibility that somebody might hire you to sit right seat in their jet? And you're you're just now starting off teaching your first student. Yeah, not at all, man. Not at all. I, you know, <laughs> when I thought that uh, I thought that's what I was going to be doing for you know a year and a half, two years, get right. that fifteen hundred hours, get right. your ATP, just kind of go down that road. But there, you know, the alternative road is uh, you know doing what we what we had talked about. But no, it was not in my mind at all. Um, I think the hope was always there. Um, but yeah, when my number got called, man, I was, I'll jump for joy. But you so. see it, you see it now. You see, like, if you had to go back and do it all over again, I mean, you, you can see how easy it was, right? Oh, I mean, yeah. Uh, oh, for sure. <laughs> right. And yeah. that's what we're trying to, that's why we wanted to have you on. I mean, so somebody firsthand just, you know, that's close to that, you know, just went through that. Um, I'm just, yeah, the networking thing is huge, but I mean, you feel like, how do I ask this? I mean, you could have sought that out. You could have, you know, beat, beat feet to the street and went out there and pounded on doors and it exists. It exists. It definitely does. And and I think you were telling me, you guys were both telling me about how you have uh, a list compiled for the viewers 
uh, oh, for part of the program. The, the, yeah. yeah, the Part 91, you know, operators right. that are out there, and, and you can get their number. Right. Yeah. So. Right. Yeah, it comes with the program. You can literally search. Uh, I don't even remember now. I used to have this number on the top of my head. It's like 17,000 different aircraft spread across the country. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a lot. So Jordan, what, what's the time frame then of all this from when you first started flying to where you're at now? How, I know you have 2000 hours, but what, how many years have you been at it? I've been at it for eight years, eight nice. years now. Uh, nice. A lot of that was a, a financial thing because, you know, learning to fly is, is not cheap by any means. So, uh, cool. and weather, uh, there was right. weather associated with the training and, and all that kind of stuff, which is super frustrating because, yeah. you know, you can you can train all, all you'd like and and you can get ready for check rides. And all of a sudden, well, the, the airplane needs maintenance or all of a sudden, well, there's a there's a snowstorm coming in and you can't take the check ride. Then that DPE is booked up for three more weeks and you get pushed right. again yeah man so right well some of that eight years i just don't want a viewer going oh man it's 1500 hours to get to the airlines i thought i could do this in 18 months two years or something some of that was you were chasing down you know paths that didn't go anywhere like right, you flew right. you flew uh, you had a helicopter job yeah you yeah. flew a helicopter so what, what i i could go deeper into that and say by the time that from from the time that i've had my initial commercial fixed wing license to now, uh, which is only a year and nine months. Wow. I'd say I've flown at least 1300 hours in a wow. jet, in a jet. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Man, that's great. That's great. Yeah. Wow. So, so, um, so when you were ahead. doing your uh, training in the helicopter, did you have like a full-time job? Was this like a career transition for you before you start working at the FBO and all that? I was I was a 21 year old guy. I was in college, uh, gotcha. but it, yeah, I mean, this is, I tried to get into it as much as I could, and I had a part time job at that time. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. So, so uh, uh, did you uh, finish college and everything, or did you just move over into aviation? I did. I, I finished college. Got. And what's your degree in? Well, it's it's actually just an associate in arts, so I oh, don't okay. have that bachelor's, and I was just looking for a way to to get to that four-year degree but yeah i found out that the airlines and Doesn't everybody matter. didn't need yeah you didn't <laughs> need it anymore so i was like to heck with uh you know doing those extra two years and getting fifty thousand dollars in debt yeah exactly. and flight training is a whole lot more fun <laughs> yeah exactly yeah so uh, well that's yeah. great so you were just saying that uh would you say how many hours in just a last couple uh, here's where i'm going uh i just found out and before we hit the record button here, Mike, and I, I didn't even mention this to you, you know, before we hit the record button, uh, when we discussed what we were going to talk about there a moment, Jordan just got some, uh, very good news last night. What is that, Jordan? Uh, yeah, just made captain. Oh, Congrats. Man. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, That's so I got great. the type rating about nine months ago, about eight and a half months ago. Wow. Uh, and I, I just kind of went balls to the wall, flew as much as possible, and uh, yeah, and it's finally uh, insurable. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know he's going to wow. be captaining around a, a sovereign, which is no—that's not a kid's toy. That's nice a thirty-thousand-pound airplane, you know. Yeah, yeah, awesome, well, great capability. Oh man, well congratulations, man. That's I that's appreciate awesome, it, brother. Yes, yeah, sir. that uh, that sovereign's known for uh, it can really get it. It can take a lot of people into a short strip, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, man. Ocean and, uh, Reef that's is a one of them. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great plane, man. Awesome. So so are you only on the Sovereign now or are you still flying the Hawker also? Uh I fly I kind of float around. Uh mainly I'm on the I'm on the Sovereign, uh gotcha. for the most part. Uh but I do float around to, to other airplanes, but I only have a type in the Sovereign. So, so can I'm, you can you tell our viewers, you know, just because you're, you're, I mean, you're, you're into this deep, but you're, you're still very early in your career. Um, tell them, you know, kind of how do you enjoy your job now and what your lifestyle is like uh, doing what you're doing? What job? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect answer. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I don't, I, I really, there are some tough days, but 
uh, you know, I, I, I don't feel like I work a day in my life. This is everything that I could have dreamed of, everything I could have asked for. Um, I work with some great guys and, you know, I've got, a, I've had a lot of mentors along the way and, and I still work with, with a lot of mentors and, and guys that are just so willing to, uh, you know, get out there, let you, uh, figure it out by yourself, but also give their input. And man, I, I just, I've got a great job. Couldn't ask wow. for more. Yeah. It's wow. uh, it's always a good day. I mean, it's what Mike and I are always trying to get across to, to folks. I mean, this isn't being a pilot is not working five days a week, sitting in a cubicle under fluorescent lights. It's working two or three days a week. And every time you go to work, you're going to somebody's uh, vacation spot. You yep. know, a lot of people are paying a lot of money to go do, and you're just, you're just going to work and you end up in Cabo for three days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man, man. So what, what was your, uh, uh, Jordan, uh, what, what sticks out? What's one of your favorite trips you've done since you started flying professionally? Um, let's see. And I've, I've been all over the last two years. That's kind of a, that's a tough one, but I think, I think just, I'm, I'm more of a Caribbean guy. I like being down there in the Caribbean and, and a lot of these private jets, man, that's where they're going. They, they <laughs> love those little islands. So yeah, staying down there for four, five days at a time, you know, that it's just, it's awesome. It's you're it's, de-icing in Georgetown and then you're going down there and it's 85 degrees. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's awesome. So you, I mean, I guess I, I asked this to our last guest and I'm just curious. I mean, I mean, you, now, I mean, you're in corporate aviation right now, but I mean, what is, do you have any goal? Where do you see yourself, you know, five, 10 years down the road? And I, I know, you know, you just made captain. So now you're going to settle into that. And, you know, of course, captain usually comes with a doubling of one salary or close to it. If it's not a complete double, um, you know, so there's going to be some fun you're going to have being a captain. Right. I remember the first time I got upgraded. It's it's like a whole new job now. It's like all the cool parts. Yeah, yeah, and... yeah. But um, where do you see yourself down the road here? Man, uh, I think we could all think this, but bigger airplanes. We we all kind of look over and go, man, look at that, look at that Falcon over there. It's a beautiful airplane. Look at that Gulf Stream. Right. Uh, but yeah, I, I would think a bigger airplane, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still going to be doing the same job. That's for sure. Uh, maybe more time off, um, to, to stay at home with the family and, and, uh, I have a wife. So that's, it's, it's my job is, is great because, you know, you always hear with being a pilot, you're gone away from home a lot and, right. uh, you know, have, having a wife, you, you do need to be at home a lot. So I do have the ability with my job to be at home quite a bit and be a pilot at the same time. So it's, it's great. Awesome. So Jordan, uh, looking back at your career to help people, um, uh, and you know, I know that you, you did a little bit of an unorthodox thing where the helicopter training and all that, but w it, I guess it would be beneficial to our v viewers. If you could do everything you did all over again in today's market, cause that's what the people are in that are watching it. Uh, what, what would, would you do anything differently? Absolutely. Uh, if I could have done anything different, I would do, I would have done the whole thing different. <laughs> <laughs> I would have fast tracked, um, went, moved to Florida for maybe six months, maybe eight, something like that, maybe even Arizona, because you, you got great weather out there. Uh, I would have fast tracked, paid, you know, one of those um, accelerate, accelerated, accelerated training. course. Yeah. And I would have just knocked it out in great weather with one of those groups that have a ton of airplanes. So this one could break down. This one could have problems, but you've still got another one. So over you wouldn't here. have did the helicopter? No. Nah. No, yeah, that gotcha. that would have been completely left out. So, do you still fly helicopters now at all? I would love to, man. Uh, I think, like, I would love to get back in that seat. It's such a blast, you know. Kind of hard a, to find them to rent and stuff. If you yeah. do, they're probably pretty pricey. Yeah, yeah, they're they're so pricey. Just just getting back into one is it's not really uh, feasible, you know. When you got a mortgage and all that, you kind of just yeah. So, 
I would love to, but but not right now. So we'll we'll figure it out. Gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. I gotcha. I got one for you, Jordan. We just had a you know some of our viewers are you know they're just kicking the tires on this whole aviation thing. Do I want to be a pilot? Whatever. Maybe there's possibly some people that watch this that you know haven't even been in an airplane before. And we did an episode just a couple few weeks ago about. Uh, what was the name of Mike? What was the scariest? Have you ever had any? Is being a pilot it's scary? Being a pilot scary. Yeah. Is being a pilot scary? Have you ever had any? Uh, uh, you know, times you were scared in an aircraft? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> 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 but uh, you kind of, you know, you rely on your training in order to get your uh, get get out of that situation. But the scariest thing I could think of was uh, I used to fly the the pipeline and the power lines. And we had a gen failure in a Bell 206. Oh, so this was the helicopter job. This was the helicopter job. Okay. And of course, the you know the pipeline, the power lines are you're super low uh, to the ground, so mm. you can survey everything. Um, and we had the generator fail, and so we, you know, all all of our our stuff pretty much went out that we we're looking at, and it's at night, so you really need it. Mm. And uh, so we just we we circled around, figured out how to get get down and we put it on the uh, right next to the road and there was about three or four cops that kept coming by and going oh what the heck's going on here <laughs> oh yeah and uh wow yeah so that that was probably the scariest thing I've, I've been a part of man yeah wow man that's a good one so uh, a couple quick helicopter questions just because i i've always been kind of fascinated with them so if if you get your airline job maybe someday and you start making all this money as a triple seven captain, you want to buy one. Can you just keep that at your house and then just take off out of your backyard? Or what are the rules on that? Oh man, there's so many gray areas associated with this. <laughs> I think the FAR say if it does not harm people or property, but I was just, as soon the, as you the, asked the question, I'm thinking gray area. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's so many of those in the FARs. <laughs> Federal but, aviation regulations, but yeah, I think it depends on where you live, man. If if you live, you know, if you got five acres somewhere, and you say you go to your neighbors, because what'll get you in trouble is, you know, your neighbors. They're gonna say, "Oh my gosh, he's got this loud helicopter. Yeah. I've got a baby. It's screaming every time it comes over, blowing so I, the shingles I, off." Yeah, there's a lot of variables <laughs> with that. But if you live in the city or in the suburbs, probably not. Probably not. Oh, a good I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> And then I guess I learned, I thought it was pretty interesting in, in researching the Kobe Bryant crash. I watched oh, a couple yeah. of interviews that uh, you can't uh, hover a helicopter in the clouds. I didn't know that. Yeah, so. yeah. Out of ground effect hover is what uh, that's called. And it's generally not what you want to do. Uh, you know, it, when you're in ground effect, you know, lower to the ground and you've, you've all of that uh, dirty air. Um, is is really helping you, that helicopter stay in the air? Um, okay. When, when you're when you're way up there, you don't have the ground effect in order to to help you. So you know, if you get a crosswind, if you get a wind or something, you can get into uh, LTE, loss of tail rotor effectiveness. Um, you know, that, that's just not a great idea. You at least want to want to you know keep it going a little bit. Get it have about 10, 15 knots, and you're good. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's great. Jordan, I just, uh, like I said, uh, in the beginning, like we said in the beginning, I mean, we can't thank you enough for coming on. I think yeah. our listeners are going to be blown away at some of the stuff, you know, definitely you've man, said here, time. but I got one last question for you. Unless Mike comes, has something else here. No, nope, nope, go ahead. This is your chance. Maybe I should have prepped you for this, but, uh, <laughs> Do you have anything for that for that guy or girl out there watching this that maybe hasn't even driven to the airport yet or is just thinking about becoming a pilot or maybe they're already in their training or whatever? Do you have any – is there anything that sticks out in your head, any piece of advice that you would want to give somebody in that position? I think I would just say, you know, follow your dreams. Um, if this is what you want to do, don't let anything stop you. Um, cause there are going to be obstacles along the way and, you know, get in there and make it happen, do whatever is necessary in order to make your dream come true because it is achievable. It is doable. And, uh, you know, the only thing that's stopping you is you. 
Right. So if you can, uh, you know, get in there and make it happen, it is achievable and just go for it. Follow your dreams. That's great advice. Wow. Yeah, that is wonderful. Wonderful. Well, uh, hey, great, great to be on. Uh, maybe uh, we can have you back on again sometime and uh, you can do a follow up on everything. But congratulations on uh, being a captain. Uh, and uh, I'm sure this is only the beginning of Jordan's career. So, we'll- Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm sure it will be. And thank we'll you guys for touch. having me on, too, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no, no problem. problem. All right. You can join us next week. We'll get back to uh, more of a normal episode. I got a helicopter taking off here. I don't know if you guys can hear that. But, um, if you have any questions, you can always submit them at podcast at propilotplaybook.com, and we'll answer your question on the show here. But, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next week. See you guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Bye-bye.